all right, here's a few more things you can do. Um, you can capture the RAM from a process. And this you can do with just Microsoft tools. So if you want to find out what a process has been doing, uh, you can go into Task Manager on your Windows machine and you can find the Internet Explorer process, for example. You download ProcDump from Microsoft Sys Internals, and now you can um, use ProcDump to dump the data from any process. So all you need is the process ID for iExplore, and it will dump a file, and this was about 320 megabytes in size. So now, if you want to analyze a memory dump, you have to know the layout, and uh, there's a tool called Memorize, which is sometimes useful, but I find often it's not updated enough to have the images. But anyway, one thing you can do is just look for plain text in there. So if you just use a normal hex viewer, you can view the memory image, and you'll be able to find, say, URLs you've been to recently just sitting there. I did this at Hope a few years back. About six years ago, most browsers would just put your password in plain text in RAM and leave it there when you logged in. And I could steal passwords this way. Now most of those products have been updated, so they use encrypted variables and don't just leave it hanging around in memory. But this remains a useful technique to know how to capture RAM and analyze it. And then um, you can analyze network data. So VirusTotal and Wireshark are, of course, extremely useful. VirusTotal is much better than it used to be. So here you download a malware traffic sample. This traffic analysis site is wonderful and has a whole bunch of samples of malicious traffic. And so you get a PCAP file, which contains a, a malicious file being downloaded. So by the way, you probably really don't want to do this on like your company laptop or one you love. You should do this in a virtual machine or like a Linux machine or one of those cloud machines you set up earlier. General hygiene when working with malware. Of course, you don't put it on your main machine you love. You put it somewhere separated. That's another thing that's great about free cloud machines. You can do something horrible, like practice attacks or malware on them, and just throw them away when you're done. And it was all a mile away from you all the time, which is what you want. So once you have, you, however, virus total, you can now just put the PCAP right up in here. And it will analyze it for you, which is very nice. So it will detect a lot of information. It will find um, suricata alerts and snort alerts and it will check the, tell you a summary of what kind of traffic was in there. It's really very nice. They can even detect that there was a Trojan being downloaded. So I mean, virus total is fantastic. It even, uh, sometimes it even spins up a sandbox and runs the malware and automatically detects what it's doing for you with one of the uh, online sandboxes. So now if you aren't familiar with Wireshark, that's another thing you should do. So you get Wireshark, you run it on anything. Wireshark is not a tool that you should use for live network monitoring because it's not secure enough and it's not stable enough. It fills up the RAM and crashes. It's not very secure because Wireshark has protocol dissectors for every possible network protocol, and those are just donated by the community, and some of them are not secure. So you shouldn't have Wireshark listening to live network traffic. The way to use Wireshark is first capture the traffic with a simpler tool like TCP dump, and then use Wireshark to analyze the captures later, because that's what it is. All these graphical features are here to make it easy for a human to analyze traffic. So this is a perfect use case. You download a PCAP and analyze it. So you'll see the data here and notice the user agent. Same thing we did before. You can add the user agent as a column, and then you can see what user agent values are available. And you see here's Mozilla, this is a real user agent from a real browser. If you look at user agents, they're always this really long thing. Mozilla, Windows, Trident. This one that just says Mozilla, that's fake. That is not a real Mozilla browser. That is some kind of script pretending to be Mozilla. So that's suspicious right there. And um, if you look at those Mozillas, you'll see that it's connecting to a URL like this with strange garbled nonsense for names and then a funny port number and all that is very suspicious. So um, this is malware phoning home, most likely something like that. And now you're getting a clue of what your indicators of compromise might be. And this is the point of malware analysis. You try to find something that will identify it, like some network traffic, so you can then scan and see which machines on your network are infected. And so if you go through here um, and look at these in more, you can also go here and look for PHP files. And you'll find some strange PHP uh, requests going on here. So you find a downloaded file, 
one great thing about Wireshark is you can totally get all the files that were transported, of course, with unencrypted connections, but you, this was transported over unencrypted HTTP. So you can just export the objects and it will reconstruct the files from the network traffic and you'll see them all. And so you can get them. And when you go through these files, you'll be able to find an image with words on it. And here you've got an EXE you can unzip. There's various challenges here where you get to practice these things. And if you want an even more in-depth analysis, you can use Packet Total, which is a website like Wire, like Virus Total, but just for PCAPs. So if you send it one of these malicious packets, it will run it and give you a thorough report of all the malicious activity. So here's a record of all the IP traffic and, and what Suricata thought of it. Here's DNS queries. Um, it shows you the suspicious activity and it shows you more here, um, messages here about malware detected, SSL certificate failed, you know, it really, it runs it and analyzes it and gives you a nice report and it does it all on their servers. So you don't even have to infect your machines or anything. And uh, Virus Total gives you information too. So, you know, you can see what registry keys it set when they ran it for you. So, you know, this malware analysis is getting easier and easier. And this instant response class that used to be very technical and involve a lot of complicated installing increasingly just involves using cloud services that do a lot of the work. Oh, am I not sharing my screen? No. You are. Why is it? Okay, good, good. I had a question there. It made me think that I wasn't. Good. Glad to hear it. Anyway, so that's why, that's why I point this out. Um, it is especially for beginning instant response people, you don't actually set up Splunk or anything. It's already there and you just learn how to use it. That's the typical job you start with security analysts using tools that other people have set up. And these cloud services are increasingly wonderful. Anyway, let me save this video.